Well, good day, everyone. Uh, bonjour, uh, Tanse. Um, so my name is Ryan Moran. I uh, work with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. I gave a fair amount of thought to what I was going to say here in this uh, brief seven minutes, and there's lots we could talk about. We are a digital archive. We could talk about OCR accuracy, our statement gathering process, but instead I'm going to speak about reconciliation, and I'm going to speak about what reconciliation means in the context of archives in our particular project. So what is reconciliation? Well, what I can say about reconciliation is that in 2008, uh, the Prime Minister and the leaders of the uh, parties at the time made an apology on behalf of all of us on, in this room as the elected officials of Canada. They apologized uh, to the survivors of the uh, Indian residential school system and said that how Canada had treated them was uh, deplorable and absolutely the wrong thing. What that has ushered in is a an era of reconciliation where we are all part of this now and that really is the mandate of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission is to be the spearhead in creating and fostering this new era that we are all a part of now. This uh, journey of reconciliation is not yet an end state. It is a journey that we are on and it is a path that is difficult and it is a path that will require many different steps and missteps and errors and victories and it is one that will be difficult, but it is a path where we are aiming to create, not even to restore, but to create rightful relations between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people within this country. So of course, uh, what were we asked to do as a commission and how does this relate to archives? Well, one of the things that we were asked to do was to collect and uh, preserve and pull together the relevant residential school records from some close to 30 odd government departments and close to 100 church archives from across the country. We were also asked to visit the oral history archives of the Aboriginal peoples of this country and to sit down and to speak with the elders and to speak with the knowledge keepers and those that have been affected by the residential school system and to collect their oral testimony and to collect their stories about what happened to them. One of the other obligations, of course, that we have as well is to ensure that the parties themselves that sign this document in good faith fulfill their obligations and live up to the promises, really the sacred promises that they've made in this agreement to produce their records. So we've got results and, and uh, we can talk about those results. And what, how do those results relate to reconciliation themselves? Well. What we found as we've gone across the country and we visited with uh, the various archives is that we found some entities have done a really good job. Uh, they have said, yes, we have records. These are of importance. Uh, we know that we have to give them up and we have to give them to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission for the purposes of our work and also to the National Research Centre at the end. And they've gone through the hard work and they've gone through the files and they've done the digging and they've done the digitization and they've spent the money in. And they will tell you that this is a very expensive and time-consuming and difficult process. At the same time, we've had entities that have tried to get out of their obligations to produce their records. And still, so there are a number of entities that have not produced their records to the Commission. And this is one that does cause me concern as, as the person that's supposed to be con uh, collecting these records. And what does that say? Well, it says that perhaps it is too difficult and it is too costly and it does take too much time. But there is something said in that about reconciliation because reconciliation itself is not easy and it is something that requires active effort and active energy on all of our parts and does require energy and time and difficult uh, things. So when we see that we have some challenges still, uh, really it says something about what promises mean and specifically what promises mean to Aboriginal people. One thing that we can say about this whole document collection process is that it has been bigger and it has been more complicated and it has been perhaps even more challenging than any of us thought in the beginning. It's certainly been more expensive. And perhaps that also says something as well about reconciliation and this journey that we're all starting on together in that it is bigger and more difficult than perhaps any of us may have thought originally when the government signed you know, the apology and the settlement agreement. But more broadly, when we think about access to archives, access to records for all the very important reasons that we've talked about, the, the fundamental nature that records and the archives hold in a, in a democratic and an open and transparent society, and we think about what this means when we are uh, dealing with uh, uh, an overwhelming majority of a, of a, of a populace in, in the Canadian society that has had a mass human rights uh, atrocity inflicted upon them, we can think about what is said when we are not granted access to the records. 
and when the old barriers remain. And we can think about what that says about whose records they are, whose control they should or should not be under, who should or should not have access to these records, who should be enabled to have greater access to the records, and what power relationships are maintained when uh, access to the records is, uh, remains difficult. Moreover, what do broken promises say to the Aboriginal people of this country, and how does that relate to other promises that have been made, these promises that our treaties, our other land agreements, our sacred and solemn pr uh, promises that the Canadian government and the state have entered into over time? So one of the interesting things uh, with the Commission is that uh, we do have some time that's left. Uh, we um, were recently uh, granted a little bit of an extension to our mandate by virtue of some of the uh, perhaps the creative interpretations of Canada's obligations under the uh, settlement agreement. Uh, unfortunately, uh, an issue that we did end up having to take Canada to court over and that the court did affirm that absolutely Canada did have an obligation to produce their records from their own archives. So time is left. We have about another 15 months uh, to collect and finalize the collection of records from the various archives around this, uh, around this country. And what I can say is this, is, about, is that while the road may have been rocky, this path of reconciliation is inherently rocky. But at the end of the day, the archival record that we create will be as much about who produced their records and how they produced them as about what's inside those records themselves. Thank you.